Good afternoon, or good morning, one and all. And first, I must say that I see a lot of you are glum, and I can understand you being glum, because John Tory has been mayor for four years, and you have enough reasons to be glum. But you can smile, because I'm Kevin Clark, and I'm your candidate for Toronto mayor, currently. At the end of the day, I may not be. That's up to Mr. Tory and city councilor. You see, I'm here to work with the council, to work to make this city good again. Now, Jim, I'll answer your question I know you're going to ask. Mr. Clark, in your history of running and running and running, I run because it's the city of Toronto, and I am a candidate for Toronto mayor. So I have interest in every single ward in the city, but I also have a special interest in Scarborough because I grew up and lived in Scarborough most of my life. My mother lives in Scarborough, my brother lives in Scarborough Rouge River, and my uncle Gilbert lives in Scarborough Rouge River, and a large amount of my friends and my loved ones. In 2013, I met Mayor John Tory in Etopico to succeed Deputy Leader, uh, Deputy Mayor Douglas Holliday. At that point, I told John Tory, I will hire him as a business consultant. Mr. Tory's response was that, Mr. Clark, you can't afford me. And he is right. But it's not financially we can't afford you, John. It's socially. Drug addiction overrides the city of Toronto at an all-time high. Crime, guns, violence, potholes, homelessness, lack of affordable housing. You're darn right, John. We can't afford you socially. And you know, John, you cannot beat me democratically on the issues if you let it be a democratic election. Call the media. Tell them, John. Promote Kevin Clark. Tell them you will have one debate against me, and the people of Toronto will be exposed to your extreme failure. But I'm willing to ignore that and work with you now because there's an issue in Scarborough and people are dying. So I will accept the Ward 41 posts, but not as a caregiver. I will be in Scarborough to clean it up. I've got a pair of boxing gloves over there, John. They don't come out for a fight. Let's make it right. And if you don't make it right, you're in for a hell of a fight. But those gloves are not just for you, John. It's for those who engage in gangs, guns, and violence. Because I have no personal interest but the interest of the people. To our police chief, Mark Saunders, I expect today you will listen to this message and you will tender your resignation immediately. Okay, Mr. Clark, yes. Mr. Clark, you're here to speak on the vacancy in I Scarborough. You're not here vacancy, to, do, uh, to direct your comments to the mayor, the so vacancy, please keep it vacancy to why you're to here today. About the mayor, has to do about the police chief, has to do about the housing. I thank Troy J. Young for coming to address the housing issue. I pay $900 a month and I live in one of the worst legal room and house in the city to where I have no rights. I am here to make this city good and I ask council to make the right decision, appoint me today to help clean up Scarborough, to deal with the crime, the violence, the abuse, and to give hope. And most importantly, remember, when you appoint me, you will do a large job a large job in reducing homelessness because people would say, hell, look what Kevin Clark did. He went from homeless to City Hall. Hey, I would rather that life than the drugs, than the alcohol, and then the violence and the theft and all the stealing that goes on. It is time for us to address real issues. And I am the solution to those issues because I don't just talk the talk. I have walked the walk. And in Scarborough, we can clean up the violence. I made 18-year-old Dario Smagata Bryant 
the youngest political party leader in the history of Ontario when I resigned on June 8th as the leader of the People's Political Party. And I wish to use Dario as an example to the young people who are going astray that when you do uh, good... Thank, thank you, you very ahead. much. Thank you. You're welcome. Councillor Kerjianis, do you have a question? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I do have a question of the Deputy, and I want to thank him for coming down to make a presentation. Certainly, he's right to be here. Uh, my question to him is that he's put his name forward federally, provincially, municipally, general elections, and everything else. Is there going to be a time that he's, I mean, he's resigned as the leader of the uh, People's Party or whatever the name was, and I apologize for forgot it. Political my party. question is, is there a time that you will stop running? Yes. You can put it down in the Guinness World Book of Records time, that you actually stop. Councillor, thank you. The time I will stop running is when councillors and the public become responsible and give me the authority to address the social issues that need to be addressed, such as youth violence, lack of youth employment strategy program, Toronto community housing, which is a total, total disgrace, and dealing with the issues that affect the people, such as legal, illegal room in houses Th where people don't have no rights. So I will stop running when you give me the authority to clean up this city or the riding I am in. Thank you. Councillor Mamalidi. So I, I, uh, I've heard you many times, uh, and, and I have to tell you that this particular speech has been very clear to me. And I, for one, have taken note with respect to Scarborough and cleaning it up. I'd like to know from you what it is that you'd like to do for Scarborough that is now, in, as far as I'm concerned, plagued with a problem. What would you do to clean it up? I ran a youth employment strategy program called YES when I was at 4000 Lawrence Avenue. Paul Ainsley would be fully aware of that area. And what I did was I went out and picked out kids who were at risk. And then I invited them and I ended up uh, contributions that come into the political party. I let them know if they contribute their time to the party, I will match them with paid hours at $15 an hour. So if they contribute two hours, I will give them two paid hours. And I had them do work on the internet, such as following people on Twitter, following people on Facebook. I also had them clean up Morningside Park. So when they're contributing the hours, I have children's festivals. So I had them went out and clean up all the parks, bag up all the parks, and at the end of the day or the end of the time they work, they got their $30 for the two hours from the party if there's contributions. And the other two hours, it goes, on a, it goes on a tax rebate program with the Ontario government through Elections Ontario, where I can issue tax credit receipts to people who contribute time to the party. So when this young person contributes the time, at the end of the year, I encourage them to file their taxes. I, when they get the receipt, say they got a $500 receipt. When they file their taxes, the Ontario government give them back $400. So now they've got a little paid employment. Now they've got the income from their tax returns because they have filed their taxes. So when, it, when the people from the drugs or the gangs come and want them to go hustle a dime bag or two, the kid will say, hey, I just filed my taxes. I got four or five hundred bucks in my pocket. I'm not going to go out there and sell a little drugs and wish going to jail. So we have to create youth employment strategy programs, realizing that the youth also have expenses, such as their cell phones, such as their internet, such as their food when they go out. So we're asking the youth to volunteer, to gain school hours and all this, but we're not giving them employment so they can have the resources so they don't have to resort to the drug dealer who says, here, I'll give you a half a ball and you go out and hustle it. When he hustles the half a ball, he brings in $100, but the drug dealer is going to take $70 off it. He's only got himself $30. He had to eat while he was out there. So we have to create programs that will create financial resources for the young people so now they're not tempted by the lure of the drug dealers or those who want them to go out and steal. Like a young man who is undisciplined, they'll say, hey, go get me a 40-pounder at the liquor store. They go to the liquor store and they th steal th a 40 th th Thank you. You got it? So thank we have you. to give them an opportunity to make an Thank you very much. Councillor Ainsley. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Speaker. Mr. Clark, uh, I know very well the work you did with youth unemployment in uh, 4000 Lawrence. Could you outline a couple of the other issues you had with TCHC while you were there? Uh, yes. Uh, Capri Property Management is Canada's second largest landlord. And I have a good friend. I send a letter to you guys, uh, Mr. Sam Colas. He will not uh, give me money, but he will give me great knowledge. And he's the 95th richest man in uh, Canada. And I have a letter here from him where he asked to contact my landlord in reference to rezoning and housing. Yes, the 95th richest man comes to me for advice because he gave me great advice. So what I did was I photographed all the stairwells, I photographed all the drug paraphernalia, all the condoms, I photographed all the busted areas from the elevator, the parking lot, the children's playground, 2,000 pounds of garbage from the side of Morningside Park, they got new sidewalks, uh, they got the roof uh, fixed because many people on the top floor, uh, their roof were falling apart. All the plastics were falling apart all across the walls. All that has been fixed. So I believe it's about a million to $1.5 million worth of repairs. New parking lots. The pools were open regularly. I had to work 20 hours. I had to be up like a certain time when I know the dealers and all of them were sleeping. But I go up and down every single stairway, photograph everything, the urine stains, the feces, all these things. I took photos, videos of them. You can find them on YouTube, the case against Capri. Then I forward them to the city of Toronto. I send a copy to you, and I send a copy to Mayor John Tory. But I'm on a mental health housing program, and when I ran to succeed Michael Ford, I put up and made campaign signs, because I used my money to feed the hungry and for these services rather than using a campaign sign. The, yeah. land, the landlord went to court, said I had a mental health, one left. God bless you said I had a mental health issue and got me wrongfully evicted, and it brought me downtown to the streets of Toronto, where my focus was Th homelessness. Th thank you. But thank my focus you. now is gun violence, crime, and seeing that the city is safe for all. Th thank you very much. God bless. Thank you.